Hello, BCPS families. We are so excited to share with you the story, Amy Wu in the Perfect Bow, by Kat Zhang and Charlene Chua, with permission by Aladdin Publishing of Simon & Schuster. As you listen to the text, we will stop and ask questions for you to think about throughout the text. After you finish listening to the story, first, we will share some questions for you to think and talk about. You will then see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text and share with your teacher. Finally, you will see some engaging activities at the end for you to have fun interacting with the book. Enjoy! Hello! Today, I'm going to read a fiction text called Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow, written by Kat Zhang, illustrations by Charlene Chua, with permission to read from Aladdin Publishing, a Simon & Schuster imprint. When I read a fiction book, I get my brain ready to think about the characters in the story. I also can think about what is happening in the beginning, middle, and the end of the story. In today's story, we'll be reading about a little girl named Amy, who is very good at lots of things. But she can't make the perfect bow. A bow is a Chinese food, and it is like a dumpling. Have you ever been frustrated that you couldn't do something? As we read today, I want you to think about how Amy feels throughout the story. As I read, I'm going to pause and think about what is happening in the story and retell the important events. Enjoy Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Bow like bow, not like bow. Amy can do a lot of things. She can brush her teeth, she can tie her shoe, she can even do both at once, sort of. But there's one thing Amy cannot, cannot do. She cannot make the perfect bow. Sometimes they come out too small. Sometimes they come out too big. Sometimes she adds too much filling, sometimes not enough, and sometimes they fall apart before they reach her mouth. Amy's mom and dad make perfect bow. So does her grandma. Their bow are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. I'm thinking about what has happened at the beginning of the story so far. In the beginning, we've learned that Amy can do lots of things, but she can't make the perfect bow like her parents and her grandma. I'm wondering if Amy will try again. What do you think she should do? All right, let's read to find out. Amy could eat them all day. Sometimes she does. Today, Amy is going to do it. She's going to make the world's most perfect bow. Bow making is an all day event. Amy's dad starts in the morning mixing together the ingredients for the dough. Then it's time to knead, knead, knead. He pushes the dough, he punches the dough. Amy gives it a try too. They leave the dough to rise. Amy keeps an eye on it just in case. It grows bigger and bigger and even bigger. Amy's dad squishes the dough down just in time. He rolls it into a log and cuts it into pieces. Meanwhile, Amy's mom seasons meat for the filling. Oh, I see that she uses garlic, pepper, salt, ginger, and mushrooms. I noticed that in the story, Amy is working really hard with her mom and dad to prepare the bow. Everyone gathers around the table and rolls up their sleeves. 
it's time to get to work. Amy's first bow turns out a little funny. So does the second. It's hard to know how much filling to add. Too little and the bow is sad and empty. Too much and oops. It's also hard to pinch the bow shut just right. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Amy watches her mom make a perfect bow. She watches her dad make a perfect bow. And her grandma, too. They all try to teach her. Roll out the dough like this, says Amy's dad. Use just enough filling, says Amy's mom. Pinch, 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 says Amy's grandma. But Amy's bow just aren't the same. They are too empty or too fat. They have holes in them. They leak. Maybe today won't be the day after all. Maybe Amy just can't make a perfect bow. I'm going to pause here. Thinking about what we've been reading in the story and looking at these pictures, I see that Amy is upset. Why is Amy upset? I think Amy is upset because she is struggling to make the perfect bow. This means she is frustrated. Then Amy has an idea. The pieces of dough were cut for grown-up hands, but Amy's hands are very small. She whispers her idea into her grandma's ear. Amy's grandma cuts each piece of dough into two smaller pieces, Amy's size pieces. Now they fit perfectly in Amy's palms. Carefully, Amy rolls the dough so it's thicker on the inside and thinner at the edges. She adds just the right amount of filling. She pinch, pinch, pinches it shut. And there it is, Amy's perfect bow. She makes another and another and even more after that. She's a bow making master. Soon all the dough and filling are gone. Everyone is tired, but they're not done yet. Amy's grandma boils a big pot of water. It's time to steam the bow. Amy keeps an eye on the steamer, just in case. All her perfect bow and all the imperfect ones too are snug inside. The bow are done. Amy's mom lifts the lid off the steamer. Whoosh! Out comes a puff of steam. Amy can't see anything at all. The steam clears. There are Amy's perfect bow. They are not too small. They are not too big. They have just the right amount of filling and they do not leak. They are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. Amy eats one, then another. Then she eats one of the not so perfect bow. And you know what? It tastes just as good. Now we can think about what happened in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. In the beginning of the story, Amy is frustrated or upset because she can't make the perfect bow. In the middle of the story, we know that Amy tries to make the perfect bow the way her family makes them, but it still doesn't work. So she comes up with an idea to make the pieces smaller so that they fit her hands. Then she's able to make the perfect bow. At the end of the story, Amy eats many of her bow pieces. 
but she is able to share some of that bow with her friends. I hope you enjoyed this story. Now it's time to talk about it. Tell someone about the events in the story, the beginning, middle, and end. What was Amy's goal in this story? How did Amy persevere in the story to accomplish her goal? How did Amy feel at the end of the story? Why? Now it's time to write about it. Think about something that was difficult for you at first, but you persevered through the process to complete your goal. Write a sentence and add an illustration sharing how you accomplished your goal. Now let's have some fun. In this story, Amy Wu and the Perfect Bao, you saw Amy persevere to make bao for her family. Ask an adult in your house if you can help make a meal in the kitchen. Even if it seems difficult at first, persevere just like Amy. Start small, like helping an adult measure or add milk, butter, or sugar to a recipe. You can also locate the items needed to make the meal like a bowl, measuring cup, or spoon. Have fun! Hi readers and writers, I'm so excited to be back with you today. In your packet this week, you're going to be working on reading words with the long I sound spelled I consonant E or I blank E. This is very similar to last week's work when you were working on long A spelling pattern, and that was A blank E. We're moving on to long I. So let's remind ourselves, what was the short I sound? We have our good old pig. I hope you remember our pig that's giggling, eh, 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 eh. and then we are going to look at our long I today. Now, just like you have heard from your teachers for months, you've heard this little riddle. I is my name, two sounds I make, short I in pig, long I in pie. So short I, I know you miss him. This is going to be that I, I, I sound, that giggle, giggle sound. And you know that our short vowel sounds have that green box behind them. I want you to notice that our long vowels do not have a green box. They have a, shout out this color behind it, yellow, a yellow box. The vowel is still written in red, so that's a good thing. We know our vowels are always going to be written in red, but our long vowels get to have this yellow background. I want you to notice that I can say its name just having the letter I, but we're gonna look at the spelling pattern today, I blank E or this blank is a black line, which tells me and you that's a consonant, okay? So when we're reading words today, I want you to be thinking, there has to be a consonant in between this I consonant, E. Let's first try to just listen to this long I sound. We are going to listen to the long I sound at the beginning of the word. So. If you hear it at the beginning of the word, I want you to put your hands on your head. If you do not hear it at the beginning of the word, just give me my, your silent X. Okay, let's go. Do you hear a long I in the beginning of ice? Ice. Idea. Idea. Good. 
into, into. Mm -mm. Got your X. <laughs> that is going to be the I, 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 the short I. Listening for I. Ready? Do you hear it at the beginning of the word Irish? Irish. Good. Do you hear it at the beginning of the word Idaho? Idaho. Good. Hands in your head. Now let's listen to it in the middle of the word. When you hear this I in the middle of the word, I want you to put your hands on your hips. If you do not, that silent X can be brought up. So we're going to listen for it in the middle of the word. The first one I'm going to do, I'm going to sample this for you. The word is fire, and I have fire, fire. So hands will go on my hip, okay? Do you hear it in the word nine? Nine. Good. Hands on your hip. Do you hear it in the word spell? Spell. Mm -mm. The word is like. 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 Good. Hands on your hip. Do you hear it in the word drive? Drive. Do you hear it in the word wheat? Wheat. Mm -mm. Do you hear it in the word right? Right. Right. Excellent. Now that we know the sound of the long I, let's look at some words and using the spelling pattern I blank E, let's try to read them. So this long I sound is going to be spelled I consonant E. So let's look at some words that have the short vowel sound and the long vowel sound. Think about your practice from last week. Think about doing long A. You were on the hunt and the lookout for A blank E. And now I want you to be on the hunt for I blank E. I see my short vowel sounds are over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little pig I, 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 over here. I have my long I spellings over here. I know that because I'm on the hunt to find I blank E. And when I find it, I can underline it when you're working in your book and you're trying to make sure, am I going to say the I, I, I pig sound? Or am I going to say my long I sound? It gets to say his name. So let's take our time. This is going to be fun. We're going to take our time one sound at a time to read this word. This is the b ball card. So the sound is b. This is my pig card sound i. This is my timer card sound t. B. I. T. Bit. But when I have this silent E at the end, I know he's not going to say his sound, but this spelling pattern is going to say long I. So it changes to B I T bite. So you watch my finger. This sound is B. This sound, the spelling pattern I, and then this sound is the timer card T B I T bite. Let's do this for this. I see the hound card. I see hound card, pig card, and then I see the dinosaur card. So the hound, good. The pig, i. The dinosaur, d, d, dinosaur, d. Let's blend this together. I, hid, hid. What's the word? Hid. Now, I see my spelling pattern. I know if I'm working in my workbook and I'm working in my book, my little decodable book this week, I can get my pencil out and find that spelling pattern. I know that this together is going to say I. So we have I, D. Let's do that again. I, D. Blend it. Hide. Hide. Excellent. Let's do one more in this way. I have my short I, I, I. 
d e m dim dim now your turn with the long i say that sound three times ready i i i it's just getting to say its name so i know that this is the spelling pattern that gets to say i so i have sound d sound i sound m mm, d i m mm, dime dime good before we leave each other today let's blend a couple more words with this spelling pattern so when i put up a letter just tell me the sound sound ooh. sound i let's blend those two parts lie blend it like good job let's look at one as a review from last week sound sound a good blend it lay K. blend it lake lake good the only difference in those two words is the i and the a they're going to both use that spelling pattern and this week it's going to be your job to find the long i spelling pattern i blank e so remember i gets to say two sounds the short i sound in pig i, 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 and the long i sound in pie we know this week we're looking at I consonant E spelling patterns. Happy reading this week.